Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slatter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars lore video. We're going to keep things pretty quick today because I know a lot of you probably want to watch the big game. Today, we'll be taking a closer look at turbo lasers, specifically looking at their weaknesses while also suggesting some fixes and better alternatives. As a bit of background knowledge though, despite their name, turbo lasers and laser cannons are not actually lasers as we know them. Rather, the weapons are basically some combination of particle beams, plasma, gas, and a bunch of other fun stuff. The point is, it's not a laser. It doesn't fire anywhere near the speed of light. Blaster or turbo laser bolts have actual mass to them, etc, etc. And this is important information because this method of dishing out damage has some serious downfalls. Some of them are covered in the essential guide to weapons and technology. The first major issue with turbo lasers is that although they were powerful, they were also extremely slow. We see for example during the Death Star Trench run that the numerous turbo lasers dotting the station's surface don't present that much of a threat to the X-Wings, especially when compared to actual fighters. But this isn't just slow firing. More importantly, it's also rotational speeds, which on Imperial Star Destroyers especially was brutally slow. So turbo lasers have trouble tracking targets, they can't fire enough to hit fast movers, and some are even stationary, unable to move whatsoever. This means that the guns are fairly limited in their effective roles, which is problematic given the fact that modern Star Wars combat relies heavily on starfighters. But there are other issues. One is maintenance, and turbo lasers were extremely difficult to maintain and replace. In battle, they needed to be kept cool and used three separate cooling systems, and if one failed, they were very prone to overheating and often explosions, which could cripple not only the gun, but the rest of the ship. Each individual turbo laser requires a specialized turbo laser power generator and several capacitor banks. Obviously, when you get to something like an Imperial Star Destroyer, which has hundreds of guns, this is not only a lot of space within the ship itself, but a lot of maintenance time required. Capacitor issues meant that the guns could only fire once every several seconds, and that there was always the risk of too much energy buildup, or on the opposite end, power concerns across the ship. The problem is, at least in large ship-to-ship -ship combat, you need more than one turbo laser firing on your enemy in order to actually do damage. That's just due largely to the strength of shielding. So you need your turbo laser spread evenly across the ship, which again, not only makes maintenance difficult, but also threatens the ship's effectiveness on one of its sides if there are any major power concerns. Smuggler Booster Tarek discovered all of this the hard way. He had to dismantle most of the guns on the Air and Adventure, which was his own private Star Destroyer, due to just how expensive they were to maintain. They were always breaking down, and he needed perhaps hundreds of dedicated engineers and a constant stream of credits just to keep the systems functional. He ended up having to cannibalize certain guns just to keep a few operational. Another weakness is how turbo lasers are fired. Each individual gun is typically controlled by a gunnery officer. Again, moving back to the Star Destroyer, which has hundreds of weapons, that means you have hundreds of personnel and that weapon fire isn't exactly coordinated. This is especially the case where droid gunners seem to do a pretty poor job in actual combat roles, as I've discussed in a prior video. So those are the main issues, the slow firing nature of turbo lasers, their ineffectiveness against smaller targets, the fact that large capital ships typically needed hundreds of weapon emplacements, and that maintenance was very, very difficult. That being said, turbo lasers do bring some benefits. They seem to have really good power generation, at least against shields. However, ship reactors seem capable of powering a full array of weapons without too much strain. As I alluded to earlier, they can also damage shielded or unshielded targets. And on that note, the decline of kinetic weaponry can also partially be tied to advancements in ship-based shielding. What's more, you can actually do turbo lasers well. It was just very, very rare. The best example of a faction that does turbo lasers well is the New Republic. Their guns were fast firing, they had advanced sensors systems which allowed them to track smaller targets, and as the Essential Guide to Weapons and Technology explains, they poured a lot of research into making
making the guns as powerful and effective as they could. On the other hand, you have factions like the Empire or the Republic, which were using technologies that, in my opinion at least, probably hampered their war effort. So what are the better options? Well, right now, I think Star Wars ships rely too heavily on turbolasers, probably due to their multi-functionality. They can take down shields, then blast through armor. However, it seems to me that taking down the shields is really the most difficult part, especially when you're dealing with a large capital ship and also when the killing blow is often inflicted by starfighters. So there are just too many turbo lasers to be honest, and they're not amazing at either job they do, i.e. taking down shields or destroying the ship itself. So if I were designing a radical new ship, I would first put more energy towards both point defense and ion weaponry. Point defense, obviously for protecting against starfighter, and ion cannons dedicated pretty much primarily to taking down enemy capital ship shields. I would still keep a few sets of turbo lasers just for whatever random duty they were needed for, but my main capital ship killer would either be a set of railguns or a Venator style heavy laser weapon. I would keep maybe four of these on the ship at all points so I could engage multiple targets and hit ships at every angle, but my main goal would be to use the dedicated ion weapons to punch a hole through the shield and then with one or two shots actually disable the ship itself with the heavier weapons. A railgun especially has better range than a turbo laser, and if you shoot it fast enough, I don't see any reason why it couldn't tear through a starship hull. Ultimately, this strategy does have some weaknesses. One, if you lose one of your big heavy guns, you're kind of in trouble. Two, I might just be ignoring the realities of power generation, though I don't think so. And three, maybe there is a benefit to having a gun which can take shields and hull. I don't know. However, there were factions that didn't abide by the turbo laser heavy warfare. Obviously, a good example is the Yuzon Vong, who basically fired super heated chunks of rock, or the Battle Dragon, which relied more heavily on ion cannons than finished ships off with proton torpedoes, which by the way I also think is a good option. Proton torpedoes are more accurate than turbo lasers, and some munitions like that can even be controlled after firing, can lock onto a target, you get the idea. Hapen ships were especially effective when they operated together in large numbers, and the ion cannons of a fleet of them were able to easily take down the shields of a super star destroyer. But that's all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have a question you'd like me to answer next time, leave it down below with the hashtag AskEck. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and taking time off your Sunday to spend with me. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend, and of course, may the Force be with you.